It's Friday, everybody, and welcome to Real News. Some pretty discouraging news was announced today. Uh, but despite that, the president reportedly plans to move ahead next week with a big budget plan that may only make economic matters worse. Buck, what's happening? First, let's look at the most recent data for the Obama economy. Um, we have 90 million people out of the labor for force currently. Let's show you what the Department of Labor just put out today. We have 88,000 um, jobs this month created, which is nowhere near near what the initial projections were. We are at 7.6% unemployment. When you add in all the people that have decided they just don't want a job anymore, that is a very bad number. You have 66.3% labor participation. This is the worst since 1979. You had 663,000 uh, 663, people drop out of the workforce. But if you're a government worker, don't worry, because government workers are only unemployed at a rate of 3.6%. Uh, what does this all mean? How bad are the numbers? Let's put them into context, figure out why they are what they are today. Joining us to, uh, is Dan Mitchell. He's a Forbes contributor. Dan, thanks for uh, joining us on the program. I'm glad to be on. First, let me ask you, it seems like there's a little bit of panic even coming from an administration that so far has tended to be rather um, consistent in its narrative that we are in the midst of a slow but steady recovery. Now this seems like well below expectations. Where would you gauge the damage economically? The big thing to understand is that what is economic growth? What is economic output? It's adding more labor and capital together and producing more. But when you're having 663,000 people leave the labor force, uh, it, it doesn't, doesn't even matter what your official unemployment rate is. You are losing your ability to be competitive, to produce, to create income, to create wealth. And I think this is very bad news for the long run of the economy because not only do you have taxes and regulation and too much spending sapping the economy on one side, you then have these programs like disability that are, that are being scammed big time where people are being lured, lured into a lifetime of government dependency. And those things, you add them up, what does it spell? G-R-E-E-C-E. -E -E. We're going to become Greece. Dan, I have, to, I have to say, you know, the, the Democrats who say that we should essentially stay the course, continue with uh, very heavy spending, going deeper and deeper into debt, they have been uh, touting the idea that, well, we can grow out of this. But these numbers to me suggest that that's not going to happen under the current policies. And the question is why they're starting to say, at least some people on the left, and I think the White House has already t adopted this line, the sequester is beginning to kick in. Others are saying, what about those $600 billion in taxes? Can you try to parse that for us just a little bit? Well, this gets us into this never-ending debate where the uh, people on the left, they believe in the fairy dust of Keynesian economics. If you spend more money, somehow that's going to boost the economy, even though it didn't work for Obama in 2009, didn't work for Bush in 2008. Heck, you can go all the way back to Hoover and Roosevelt in the 30s. It didn't work for them earlier. Uh, but the key thing, if you're a politician, you love Keynesian economics because it turns your vice into a virtue. You're told it's good to buy votes with other people's money, but it doesn't work in the real world. And unfortunately, we, we're digging ourselves into a very, very deep hole. The burden of government spending is like an anchor around the neck of the economy. And yeah, can we grow ourselves out of it? Of course we can, but not under the current policies. So Dan, very quickly, uh, clarify for us, what's driving this number? Sequestration cuts that started March 1st, or the payroll tax went up for everybody starting January 1st. The payroll tax increase was a lot bigger than the sequester. The sequester is just a tiny 1.2 percent of fiscal 2013 outlays, and we're still going to spend more in 2013 than we spent back in 2012. Uh, but it's not just the, uh, the payroll tax increase. As part of its fiscal cliff, Obama was able to push up tax increases on small businesses and entrepreneurs and investors. And as a result of Obamacare way back in 2010, we got a bunch of taxes on investment and capital uh, beginning January 1st of this year. So you, you add that to the Dodd-Frank regulations and all the other things happening out of Washington, Think about it this way. If you're a job creator out in America, the federal government right now is your enemy and it's making it very difficult for you to do anything. And then, as I said, you have to look at both sides of the equation. You have all these government dependency programs that make sitting on your rear end more attractive than actually going out and uh, getting a private sector job. All right, Dan. Thanks very much. Dan Mitchell, Forbes.com Forbes contributor. We appreciate it. Thanks for joining us in the program.